Hi, I'm Jeff Garzik. I'm a BitPay core. I'm a Bitcoin core developer, and I work with BitPay. It uh, does get a little bit confusing because I work for an open source project and not a company. But Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? Um, it's certainly in the headlines quite a bit. Uh, I got a text message from my landlord the other day telling me that uh, Bitcoin had declared bankruptcy. That was interesting because I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> um, it's, it's all over the headlines. What is it? What are the implications of Bitcoin? What can you do with Bitcoin? Should you avoid Bitcoin? Let's take a look. Bitcoin the organism. Now. In the beginning, we need to take a uh, look at the building blocks for Bitcoin before we can think about Bitcoin itself. Because there are several interesting concepts which have arisen in the past 20 years that enable Bitcoin. Bitcoin was simply not possible before today. Number one was open source. This is a new software engineering method that was uh, generally, uh, it arose in the 1980s, became popular in the late 1980s. And the general point behind open source as an engineering method is to follow academia. Now let's think about what chemists or biologists do when they are developing their theories, conducting their experiments, testing hypotheses. After that process is done, they don't just publish, what they do is called peer review. Uh, the chemists, the biologists, they send their work, their research, their data around the world and have everyone else cross-check their work as sort of a check and balance. Software engineering was typically not done this way. Typically, we'd, uh, you would see something called the cathedral method of software development. That's where you have a few software engineers like myself in an ivory tower somewhere. They just say, okay, well, I've written my program. Here's my program. Enjoy my program. That's how a lot of Microsoft software is written. Yet, what we need is something with peer review. We need a little bit, well, we need a lot better process. Enter the bazaar. That's a uh, market on a Turkish street, and it uh, very accurately models the open source development process. Now, you see uh, all these people in this picture, they're not being directed in any way. They're just following their own self-interest. They're looking at what they want to look at, and then they move on. In the software industry, in terms of peer review, this is what we want. We want to encourage anyone in the world to look at our software, to review our software, to give us feedback, tell us how we're screwing up, how we're not screwing up to test the software. The fundamental premise of open source is that it's open. Transparency, just like democracy and government. Transparency will cure almost any ill. There may be a problem, but given enough sunlight and given enough insight, you can follow that. Software engineering is now following that principle. Uh, Facebook, Google, uh, just about any internet site that you visit is built on open source software today. Come on, tech. There we go. Second principle information wants to be free. That's not a philosophical statement, that's a statement of engineering reality. It's very easy to copy digital information and, design, and it's designed that way. Digital information can be reproduced exactly. If you remember the old photocopiers or you remember. Uh, I know maybe the younger people in this audience don't know what this is, but if you had a cassette tape and you wanted to copy the cassette tape to another cassette tape, that was an analog process. You would lose some of the audio in the process. When you're making photocopies, paper to paper, you're going to lose some of the information. The photocopy is never as perfect as the original. With digital information, digital copies, that's not true. Information wants to be free. That's a simple statement that it's far, far easier to copy information, to leak information, than to restrict information. And we see that with Edward Snowden and the recent leaks. The U.S. government spends billions securing the secrets of the government. And one system administrator at the NSA did a little web scraping and released that to the world. You also see that in Hollywood where 
there are billions lost and billions spent on movie piracy. Information wants to be free. They're, they're basically pushing uphill, or uh, you know, as we say in North Carolina, peeing into the wind. <laughs> Lastly, the thing that made Bitcoin possible was the internet. The internet is really one of the first global decentralized communications tools that we've, all, that we've had in history. Now typically, communications tools, you can think telegraph, telephone, messenger, Pony Express, that sort of thing, but that was always centralized. It always goes from a hub to a hub. But the internet is simply a decentralized collection of networks all over the world. So no one person, no matter how much the politicians want one, has an internet kill switch. It's a fully decentralized network that enables worldwide communication. Now, when you combine all that, what do you get? You get Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, utilizes the decentralized nature of the network to create, and I'm not even gonna talk about currency. You've probably heard about Bitcoin as a currency. Let's go one level below that. Software is like an onion, layers in an onion. One level below the currency, you have an asset register. That's fundamentally what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a global decentralized way that for the first time in history, it's the first practical way to do business over the internet with no prior relationship, no central administrator, no central hub of trust. That's never happened in the history of the world before. And that's what Bitcoin brings. Now, on top of that creation, as the first demo application, there's a currency. But I want you to understand that Bitcoin is more than a currency, it's a technology. You can uh, not just exchange currency over the internet, you can exchange a deed to a house, a deed to a car, stocks or bonds, any digital asset can be securely transferred over the internet, anywhere in the world, completely borderless, within seconds. So, Bitcoin the currency. This is probably what you've heard uh, most about in the media. Uh, the best way to describe Bitcoin the currency, which is running on top of Bitcoin the technology, is digital cash. It's not a credit card. You can't call up someone if you lose your money and say, I need my money back. Just like the $20 that are in my wallet right now, if that gets stolen, then I call the police, but I, that, that doesn't mean I get my $20 back. Functionally, it's an irreversible guaranteed payment, like a cashier's check. Now, how does this fundamentally work? is every transaction in Bitcoin is broadcast throughout the entire Bitcoin network. And that's fundamentally, if we think back to open source and information wants to be free, that's two of the building blocks of Bitcoin. You broadcast your Bitcoin transaction to everyone in the entire world. And everyone validates that you are not counterfeiting money. So it's a shared validation system. Everyone cross-checks everyone else. Everyone in the Bitcoin network is a check and balance. Bitcoin is fully decentralized. There's no central bank. So how does it work? Math. Math defines the rules under which Bitcoin operates. There is a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins that will ever be in existence. And uh, the minimum Bitcoin is just seven decimal places out one Bitcoin you can see on the screen. Now, another thing that's never happened in history is you can attach rules to the money that you're gonna spend. I can say, uh, here is a bounty for solving this really complex math problem, and then the only way in the world that you can receive those Bitcoins is that you solve that complex math problem. Every single Bitcoin has a math equation attached to it that says how to spend it and you can change that math equation. Open source. Open source Bitcoin, you don't have to trust someone to tell you, like me, that Bitcoin is useful and interesting. You can look at it yourself if you're a developer computer programmer. Everything about the system is entirely open to inspection. 
the success of Bitcoin is critical that, uh, based on that openness. It's fundamentally a transparent audit. Data is cross-validated by everyone. So why? Why would you want Bitcoin uh, right now? Well, right now, the, the standard disclaimer is yes, it is experimental. So don't go putting your life savings into it right now. <laughs> but why Bitcoin? It's a better internet-based system to securely transfer digital value across any border, across town, from smartphone to smartphone. When we uh, pay for Subway sandwiches in the office, we just hold our smartphones up to each other. And we don't have to swipe a card, we don't have to log into a website, we just hold our smartphones to each other. The, uh, you control your own money. It's uh, monetary freedom. When you make a deposit into a bank, you don't control your money anymore. The, base, the bank gives you an IOU. And that's where we hear about bank runs, is because your bank doesn't store your money, it lends it out. And if there's a sudden cash crunch, then your bank is short of money, even though your IOU is still, value, still valid. Other uses of Bitcoin is uh, the uh, monetary supply cannot be inflated. They can't just turn on the money printing presses like they do in uh, other central banks in other countries. Online sales with zero fraud. Bitcoin means that, uh, to make a concrete example, if you're selling a, a good over the internet, then you need to be certain that the payment has been received to you and will not be charged back or canceled. Otherwise, you might ship a good and then you don't receive payment. Bitcoin will help with that problem and as well identity fraud because Bitcoin does not require any identity to push payments to you. Low cost remittances. I spent about $130 to send $1,000 to my step-uncle in Croatia using Western Union. That would cost about one penny to do the same thing with Bitcoin. International settlements. There are huge banks, multi-billion dollar banks, that do nothing but settle uh, transactions across borders. Bitcoin makes those banks just completely irrelevant. Emerging markets or the unbanked. There are 80 countries in the, around the world, they just don't have access to credit cards. And a lot of the uh, people in that country, they're poor, they're disadvantaged, and they simply don't have access to banks. No one is denied access to Bitcoin. You can, if you have as little as a, a uh, dumb phone with SMS, you can send and receive Bitcoins. But Bitcoin is not just a currency, it's not just a payment system. And here's some of the things that you're going to be hearing about in the next couple years. As I mentioned, Bitcoin, the technology, can be used to transfer any digital property. Whether it's a title to a house or a car, you could, uh, in theory, you could transfer title to my smartphone to a car, and then I tell my smartphone app to unlock the car, turn it on, and I'll drive away. Multi-signature transactions are another feature that Bitcoin offers that's very interesting. If uh, you want to secure your money at a corporation and you can say, well, I need a signature from the CEO, the CTO, and the treasurer before this money can be spent. And mathematically, math guarantees that the money cannot be spent unless you have the signatures from all those people. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of Kickstarter. Bitcoin includes a Kickstarter feature, which uh, when scaled up, you can... Uh, Imagine some very interesting possibilities, for example, uh, funding uh, public roads, uh, not with Kickstarter, but with some of the assurance contract features that Bitcoin has. Um, stocks, bonds, cars, houses, anything that can be associated with a digital entity can be stored in Bitcoin's asset register. There's something called smart contracts, which are fundamentally math-based rather than legal-based contracts. And, uh, but overall, uh, one of the more exciting things about Bitcoin is the technology is slowly making its way into corporations and governments, not for the currency purposes, but simply for transparency of auditing. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could go to a Fortune 500 company or our own government and look exactly at every line item 
in their books and prove that they're not spending the money or they are spending the money depending on precise policy directives. Overall, uh, I think that Bitcoin is having a major impact in uh, not only economics, and, and you see it on uh, CNBC, et cetera, but really in computer science. Because uh, as I got uh, involved in Bitcoin in uh, July 2010, I got involved in Bitcoin because I thought it was impossible. I thought that if I had a digital file on my hard drive that was representing some money, surely I could just copy this to my mom, and now I have $20, and she has the same $20. How do you solve that problem? Bitcoin solved that problem. And so that's changing computer science itself, where you have provable, by math, digitally signed transactions, which cannot be forged, cannot be counterfeited, cannot be double spent. What you'll see in 2014, moving forward, is uh, right now with uh, my employer, BitPay, uh, we see a lot in the background of Wall Street and Silicon Valley very actively investing in Bitcoin technology. Uh, one of the uh, original uh, authors of the Mosaic web browser, Mark Andreessen, who is now a Silicon Valley ventured capitalist, he noted that Bitcoin is really sort of the, the first internet that came after the internet, the first really world-changing technology, he felt, that has occurred since the internet. It's basically, it's money over IP, money on rails. And that's why you see both Silicon Valley and Wall Street very actively pursuing Bitcoin. Not necessarily uh, just for the currency properties, but for everything in, in relation to auditing, transparency, security, cryptographic, uh, cryptographic digital security. So fundamentally, Bitcoin and Bitcoin-like technologies will be rolling out in almost every major Fortune 500 company that you're aware of today. Where does this leave you? Well, Bitcoin is, as I mentioned, it's an experiment. It's a social experiment. It's an economic experiment. It's a technology experiment. So I can't predict that Bitcoin is going to rule the world one day, um, but I do think that uh, it's very disruptive. It's very exciting, and uh, I agree with Mark Andreessen that it's really the next major internet technology that uh, is going to impact the world in a great way. So I hope you'll learn more about Bitcoin. Uh, you can go to bitcoin.org and educate yourself about this technology. You can uh, download it for free and use it for free. So uh, please check it out. Thank you very much.